Hey, JS folks, it's been a busy month for React, Vue, Angular, and Bun. Let's get you up to speed on it. I'm Jan Nicholas, developer advocate at JetBrains and host of today's episode of JS Roundup, the show where we summarize all the interesting things going on in and around the JavaScript ecosystem into manageable bite-sized chunks for you. We'll also be talking to the creator of ESLint, Nicholas Zakers, about ESLint 9, so make sure to stick around for that. Let's get into it. React 19 is not released yet, but it's getting support for custom elements. Rick announced that React 19 will have direct support for custom elements and all the tests from customelementseverywhere.com will pass. Right now, React has issues mostly around dealing with properties and attributes that caused several tests to fail. As you can see, the new changes make all the test screen, which is just what we like to see, right? If you want to play with this feature yourself, you can use the experimental version of React. This is huge news for anyone relying on web components that are commonly used for central design systems. I'm very excited about this feature. Before we get into everything hard in Vue and Angular, and make sure to hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date with everything going on in the JavaScript community. All right, back to business. Vue 3.4 Slam Dunk. I love the fact that they use anime and manga names for the releases, though they already use the best for version 3. Anyhow, it has a bunch of improvements. Foremost, the template parsing got twice as fast, improving build speed, but also overall improves the speed of tools like Vola and Vue TSC. Additionally, Vue 3.4 enhances the reactivity system. Computed values now just cause the component to re-render if the computed value actually changed. Before it was the case that any change of the underlying value would cause a re-render. There's too much in this release to go into everything in detail, but just quickly. Define model is declared stable. Vbind now has a shorthand syntax and it comes with some deprecations. So make sure to check the release blog post for all the details. Angular 17.1 was released. For minor releases, you wouldn't expect life-changing changes, but the Angular team is always full of surprises. Angular 17.1 introduces signal inputs. Instead of using the input decorator, you can now use the input function, which makes your property a signal. So no more setter and getter pattern for implementing on changes for your inputs to react on input changes just to just a plain old signal. Signal inputs is just the first step to signal-based components becoming a reality. Besides all that, Angular 17.1 also comes with TypeScript 5.3 and Vite 5, which offers nice improvements themselves. For instance, my favorite TypeScript 5.3 feature is the added support for type narrowing on switch true statements, which is a heavily underutilized feature. Staying with the Angular ecosystem a little longer, Analog.js, the Angular meta framework powered by Vite, is the latest reason for some X drama. The team introduced a .ng file format inspired by Svelte and Vue's single file component format. Instead of using classes and decorators, this approach fully leverages functions and therefore provides an entirely different developer experience. The team decided to change the .ng file ending to .analog to be more intentional with its purpose and usage. Be aware that this is purely an experimental approach solely available in analog. It is challenging the status quo and current boundaries of Angular, and I do appreciate this. This is how innovation works, and I'm excited to see what the analog team comes up with. I just got the information from backstage that our guest just joined. Welcome, Nicholas. Thanks for joining us. Nicholas, you're the creator of ESLint, which is a library that is used the most often by users of our JetBrains JavaScript IDE web swarm. ESLint has been around for more than 10 years and become an integral part of our tool. You just released a new version. So what is planned for version 9? Yeah, thanks for having me. So in version 9, we're really doing two major changes. One is we are changing the default configuration system that ESLint has been using since it was first released to our new config system that we call the flat config system which is a dramatically simplified version of our configuration that we think people are really gonna like. Now, the old configuration system is still in there. So if you need to, you can use an environment variable to switch back into that mode. But we're really hoping most people will try the new configuration system uh, because it's a much better experience. And the second thing that we're doing is we are laying the groundwork for language plugins in the future. So there are a lot of people who have created 
ESLint plugins today that do things like lint GraphQL or lint JSON code, which ESLint doesn't do on its own. And we're putting things in place to make play, to make creating plugins like that a lot easier going forward. So ESLint has literally millions of downloads. How can our viewers best prepare for version nine? Well, the easiest way to prepare to prepare for version nine uh, is really to start looking at converting your config file into the new format. So even in the later versions of ESLint version eight, you can use the new config file uh, already. As long as you put in, just add your eslint.config.js file, delete your old .eslint RC file, and eslint version eight will automatically pick that up and know like you are opting into the new config file format. So if you can start doing that with eslint version eight, then when eslint version nine comes along, uh, it's going to be a pretty smooth upgrade for you. Nice. That sounds awesome. Now the question that probably is very exciting for everyone listening. You've recently published the alpha release. Any idea when we can expect the final release? So there's no set timeline, but the way that we look at it is once we have completed all of the tasks that we had listed for beta, uh, which you can go and see on our GitHub repository, there's a project board for version nine. So you can see how far we are along. Uh, when everything that's completed for the beta is done, then we'll release the first beta. And assuming we don't get any, uh, we don't have any major issues with that, then the next step is to do a release candidate. Uh, and then assuming that goes okay, then we will do the full release after that. So as I'm speaking to you right now, we've just released uh, Alpha 2 last week. And we anticipate that the beta could be ready either next week uh, or for the release after that, which would be three weeks. So that would end up being in March 2024. So if all of that goes well, then we are looking at a final release towards the end of April or beginning of May 2024. Nicholas, thank you so much. It's always great getting first-hand information from the folks working on the tools we depend on. We really appreciate everything you and your team are doing. Thank you so much for joining us. We've already got off an exciting start this year. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a quick hint. What happens when you make everything a dependency? Chaos happens. The everything package literally broke NPM. The reason? You cannot unpublish a package that is depended on by another package. And then what happens when you have a package that depends on every version of every package out there? No one can unpublish packages anymore. Somewhat funny and somewhat sad, but for all the details, make sure to watch Theo's video on it. You can find the link in the video description. Let's talk about the project with the best name, Bun. The team did four minor releases just in January one of them shipping Bun Shell. Bun is officially now competing with jQuery for the dollar variable name. Bun Shell aims to make shell scripting easier, particularly in cross-platform situations. That's all I have for you today, you wonderful people. I hope this has been fun and that you now have enough information to go out into the world and be the most interesting person at parties. I'm sure that everything in the ecosystem will have changed by the next episode, so be sure not to miss it. Stay great, bye.